is the Navara, a tier eight premium Soviet battleship. It is the main reward of the Ekla, the Ionian campaign, and the ship boasts 12 16 inch main guns and a pretty potent secondary setup. And we are setting up the ship for secondaries. So uh, the default setting is a seven kilometer range on the ship. So that means that you want to go check out the secondary build on the ship. And that is exactly what we have done here. And with that, let's check out the setup of the ship and the commander, who is Mikhail Kedarov. I just recently upgraded him to rank 16. I haven't used this commander at all. But with the secondary build here, we went with Kedarov. Vicious Circle is the base trait. Battleship gun traverse speed is improved. And then we went with a secondary build inspiration of Haruna and Friends von Hipper. And they both improved the secondary gun range. And that is the important part. Here we went with not the one for nuisance, which improves the risk of catching fire and the risk of flooding and torpedo damage to the Citadel. And we didn't go with Brawler here because I don't want to take a hit on the battleship main battery range. We're kind of struggling with the main battery range anyway, as it turns out. Second skill is Porcupine, which improves the gun range, uh, secondary battery shell grouping, and the secondary battery dispersion. All those secondary qualities are improved. Then we went with Collective Labor, which improves the damage control party duration and adds one damage control charge. Then we went with Properly Meticulous for the fourth skill, which improves all these secondary qualities, the battery reload time, targeting duration, uh, dispersion, and survivability of the secondaries. Legendary skill is Will to Rebuild. Amount of HP recovered is improved by 47% here at Legendary Rank 2. Uh, duration takes a hit of 30%, but that's kind of uh, compensated for by the amount of HP recovered. And as you uh, rank up in Legendary uh, Rank, that will just get improved uh, up to 110% if you get to Legendary Rank 4. So the special effect for Will to Rebuild will auto-repair when the HP is equal to or less than 20%. And that is active when you're within two kilometers of an allied ship here at legendary rank two. That goes all the way up to three and a half kilometers at legendary rank four. So let's check out the upgrades for the Navarin. And since this is a secondary build, we went with secondary battery mod two, which improves the range and the dispersion by 20% respectively. And then we went with propulsion mod two to help out the acceleration. Then we went with the Concealment System mod, and this basically doubles up on your incoming fire dispersion so that the shells will scatter a little bit more in addition to what the fully upgraded camel or skin will do. And this also helps out your detectability range by another 10%. Last one here is the Main Battery Mod 3. Main Battery Reload Time is improved, but the Traverse Speed takes a hit. And I didn't think that I would really have that much of a benefit from secondary battery reload time and that is why i did not select this as uh the upgrade slot four option so in some ways it's not a hundred percent complete secondary build but it's enough of a secondary build to get the job done as you'll see in the replay load out high explosive shells arm piercing shells we'll check those out later Damage control party, you only have four consumables here, so you got to watch out for that. So if uh, you're in a battle and people are aware of that, they can just focus on lighting you on fire, and eventually you're going to run out of the damage control party charges. And that is kind of a problem with these ships that have a limitation on a damage control party. Duration is 11 and a half seconds, reloads every 40 seconds, and as we said, there's only four. Repair Party Consumable will partially restore a ship's HP by repairing any light damage at the rate of 510 hit points per second, and that really ratchets up as you rank up your legendary uh, ranks there on the Commander when you have Will to Rebuild selected. Duration is 19.6 seconds, reloads every minute and a half, and there are three of those consumables. Then you definitely want to uh, check out the Enhanced Secondary Targeting. It's the only option here and it helps out the uh, battery shell grouping, the dispersion, uh, duration, reload time, and the number of consumables is four. So uh, secondary battery shell grouping is improved by 100% and dispersion 50%. So 
Yeah, runs for almost 40 seconds there, reloads every 100 seconds. Ship comes with a cool Navarin flag. You want to make sure to check that out when you get the ship. It also comes with a Type 9 Premium Permanent Camouflage. Sea detectability range and incoming fire dispersion is 4.5% respectively. Specs survivability, hit points is 69,400, armor is 19 to 400 millimeter, and you don't have much torpedo damage reduction, so watch out for that. And you have 12 16 inch guns here, and with this build, it only reaches out to 16.7 kilometers, and that's kind of short, but we do make do with that. Um, yeah, I, I would rather go with the secondary build here and a shorter main battery gun range than. Uh, no secondaries or very short secondaries where you don't get the effect and you'll check that out a little bit in the replay video so reload time here on the main guns is 31 and a half seconds traverse time is 30 seconds and i think the starts out the traverse time is like 45 seconds when you don't do anything uh with the commander or the, any of the upgrade slots so he shells have a maximum of 58 40 uh, 58 50 with a 41 percent fire setting chance so that's a pretty high fire setting chance but i basically uh, don't use that and i use the armor piercing shells which are only 11,000. so i might want to go back and check out the um he shells and as you'll see i've only played exactly one match in a navarin and that's the highlight that you're going to see and uh, yeah, I might want to go back and check out uh, the fire setting capabilities, but the secondaries are the thing here. And you do have, uh, well, 18 and 16. So you've got um, just under 40 secondary guns here and they reach out to 11.1 .1 kilometers, 5.4 second reload time. So you don't really see the barrage of secondary shells going, but they are kind of effective at 11.1 .1 kilometers. But um, yeah, maybe you do want to go and change the uh, loadout or the upgrade slot, not loadout, but the upgrade slot and add that um, secondary option to increase the, uh, to quicken the secondary. Uh, yeah, secondary's 11.1 .1 kilometer range is pretty darn good. AA defenses, you do have a lot of guns here and you might knock down a lot of aircraft. I don't know if you get a clear sky medal these days with uh, 40 knockdown aircraft required, but um You'll do pretty good with the AA defenses, it looks like. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 27 and a half knots, three quarters of a kilometer turning circle radius and 16 second rudder shift time concealment. 13.1 kilometers range by sea, range by air is 10.9. And if you're firing into smoke, it's 14.7. Okay, so here, uh, yeah, 100% 100% <laughs> win rate. Uh, with the Navarin so far, and I've played exactly one match. I'm sure I'll play more, but yeah. So the highlight video you're going to see is this one match right here. So, all right. So here's the armor. It looks pretty good. A lot of yellow and orange armor. Let's check out the Citadel. And yeah, as I said in the first look video for the update aftermath, uh, the first look portion of the update aftermath video, the uh, Citadel does look pretty good. I'm going to go with that. Overview, secondary reach, above average secondary battery range. And yeah, at uh, 7 kilometers default and 11.1 .1 kilometers when you do the secondary build, that is a pretty good secondary reach. Full circle main battery turrets can rotate a full 360 degrees. And what it is, is it is the last two turrets here in the back of the ship that do rotate to 360 degrees the front turret doesn't really do that but uh yeah uh, you do get a quicker uh, gun on target at time here with the 360 degree main gun battery range hidden good concealment means the ship can get close to enemies before being detected so then as far as the navarin goes in february 1914 Work on a new battleship design commenced with the primary focus being to arrange 16 inch guns in quadruple gun turrets. Secondary battery comprised 5.1 inch guns produced by the Obukov factory while the main turrets were positioned along the ship's center line. Because of the outbreak of World War I, no ships of this design were laid down. Your design was 1915, and well, hey, we've got the ship in the game here, 
and let's see what we can do with the Navarin with a secondary build in a standard match. All right, here we go. It looks like there are like five legendary ships per side here. So even though we're in a tier eight ship, it looks like we're in a legendary match. And here is an Alaska that beached and the Alaskas are kind of tough. You don't want to take those for granted. Luckily, he scattered his uh, rounds all over the place. And who knows if that's because of the concealment mod that we did in the upgrade slot along with the camo, but he certainly did not get many hits. I guess he got um, a few hits on us, but uh, he did knock us down by a few thousand. But overall, it wasn't really all that bad. And here you can see everybody is uh, tar <laughs> targeting me. Looked like three guys were targeting me. They're the Alaska wisely pointed nose on instead of broadside like that. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to sit here and see what we can do against the Alaska. That Grocer first over there, you can see he's got half of his health gone. The Duncan is still doing pretty well. But that Grocer first, I think he may have been going broadside and just basically got obliterated by my teammates. But here you can see, you're going to see the guns in the back in the middle do the 360 traverse here. And those guns really do swing around pretty quick. So here you can see some pausing in the video. And I think that was because of network latency. And uh, my network connection is 50 megs down and uh, 20 megs up, uh, 15 megs up. But here you can see the secondary is going. And my point is, even though I've sort of upgraded my network, I was still getting a little bit of lag. And who really knows what, what's going on there? Um, but the Alaska is all of a sudden not really looking so great. And he is definitely within our secondary range we we're just pounding this guy and here i would think that 12 16 inch guns would definitely take this guy out but it didn't and the alaska is very tough almost like a a battleship and that was the thing about the alaska from day one so it's basically a cruiser that for all intents and purposes behaves like a battleship and then they upgraded uh the alaska's firepower so it really does inflict sort uh, darn near battleship damage so you definitely want to uh be careful of the alaska here you can see we are way down in health and we're kind of going broadside to these guys to try to get the most out of our uh 16 inch guns and that is um it is a risk but uh, i'm a risk taker a lot of times i'm trying to go for maximum damage and uh just like uh you know in finances you if you uh you need money to make money. Sometimes you need to go broadside to do the devastating damage. And that's, I, I guess I probably do that a little too much, but that's basically what's going on there and why I was taking all those chances. Yeah, the um, Duncan is really getting obliterated by my teammates as is the Grocer first there. He is just broadside. And we um, was expecting to take that guy out on that salvo, but he got taken out on his own and we are down, but we are up uh, three ships to two, and we are up by just uh, 60 points or so. It uh, looks like 75 points, uh, 85 points. So we are going to come around here, and I'm going to try to squeeze in between those islands, and it doesn't work out so well because of the network, la network latency that uh, I get caught in between the islands because I can't maneuver as well as I think I can because the network is uh, lagging out on me and it's uh, letting me shift around. So uh, maybe we'll cut that part out of the video here. It was kind of uh, boring anyway, but I thought that I would have uh, had a lot more damage on the Duncan right there. So uh, All right, so we're maneuvering through the gap like we know what we're doing and we're gonna come around here and close in onto Vermont and uh, start taking him out with our secondaries. We're almost closed up to 11.1 .1 kilometers. And yeah, as it turns out, we did end up getting the Alaska with the secondaries and we got a close quarters expert medal and the first blood medal, I think is what that was.
But yeah, so uh, we got a clear shot there. The island indicator went away, so we took a shot at the Vermont. We got a couple hits and three ricochets, so that is not really all that great. And I'm kind of um, underwhelmed, I guess you could say, with the lack of main gun damage and the accuracy of the main gun. So it's probably a feature of what's going on here with the ship. And now we are definitely within secondary range of the Vermont and we are just uh, gonna let him have it. He is nose on to us, so he's trying to take minimal damage. And there's a Shimakaze that's, uh, that looks like a Shimakaze wall right there. A wall of Shimakaze torpedoes. And he's just blanketing that gap. So anybody on the blue team that uh, wants to go through that gap is going to have to uh, deal with those Shimakaze torpedoes. And we, we are happy to just sit here and let the secondaries pummel the Vermont. And hopefully we can get another, it looks like we're going to get another close quarters expert medal here. And we do. So yeah, I, I, okay, so when it actually happened, I thought for sure that that was a close quarters expert, that the secondaries took out the Vermont right there. We did get the destroyed ship, so I don't really understand what happened. Uh, maybe if I look at this yet again, I'm going to realize that somehow the main guns got the hit and I just sort of missed it. There's an unfortunate blue team at Musashi right there. They got obliterated. And here come uh, some more torpedoes down the gap. And we are, we have a clear shot on the Musashi. We're behind the island, so he can't see us. So this is perfect for us. And again, I would have expected these shells to take out the Musashi because the Musashi and the Yamato are very vulnerable to broadside shots from battleships. So we are up to 87,000 damage, 115 secondary hits that is pretty good here comes some more torpedoes and we are uh we, we should really wreck this guy with this uh salvo i'm expecting another destroyed ship and yeah um i don't know i i'm thinking that there's a little bit of a lack of firepower here on the uh Navarin main guns compared to what I would expect. Um, yeah, I guess really I don't know what to expect, but I'm not getting the damage that I would um, would have assumed I would get is probably the best way to put it. There I do get an assisted destroyed ship. And there's a Des Moines right, uh, he's way out of our range by a couple kilometers. So my plan is, and there's a Shimikaze over there by the smoke. So my plan is, and, and this guy, this battleship right here is going to get wiped out. Uh, the um, Des Moines is going to have a field day on anybody that's trying to go into the, um, the base here and capture the base. So I'm not spotted. My plan is to come in here and capture the base and angle over to the right hand side of the base and if I have to I can retreat because there's three minutes left we're up by uh, probably a good um, uh, a battleship number of points uh, 100 points or so and 130 points were up so if one more ship gets destroyed we should be okay still but um, if the Des Moines now, I think the Des Moines and the Shimikaze are going to come toward the base to see if they can start spotting me. Once they spot me, it's going to be open season and the Des Moines can really uh, cause quite a bit of damage. You can stay at that distance, fire at me, uh, probably start me on fire, cause a lot of havoc, probably almost take me out. And he's so maneuverable that my chances of uh, getting him uh, with salvos every 30 seconds is pretty slim. So now we're down to 2 minutes and 15 seconds here. And I am angling away. There's that cruiser. If that cruiser gets taken out, we will be in trouble, especially if we get taken out. So here's a Des Moines. 
You can see he is angling out a very, very good maneuvering. Let's see if I can get any shots on him. It looks like I'm not going to be able to. Look at the quick reload rate here with all these HE shells. We're down to 13,000 HP. And he's reset us in the base, so we're not really doing any good in the base here. At this point, my teammates are starting to go after the Des Moines. And now we're down to 11,000, so this could be a very bad deal. I've locked my secondaries on the Shimikaze, and we are going with the secondary booster on the Shimikaze. And now I am uh, booking out of town. I'm getting out of the base. I'm just basically trying to survive for another one minute and 10 seconds and win the match and not let them take any shots at me. I only have 7,221 hit points of health left and had I have stayed in the base, for sure I would have gotten taken out and that would not have been great. We probably still would have won the match, but why take a chance? I've seen a lot of matches where uh, people are just interested in destroying other ships and don't realize that if you run out of harm's way, you're going to end up winning the match. So here, I'm doing whatever I can to preserve the win on the match. And 30 seconds to go. Uh, spoiler alert, that's exactly what happens. We are into uh, will to rebuild range, so we are building back up our HP. So at this point, it is all good. 104,000 damage, 120 secondary hits, 60 main gun hits. I guess that's a lot of second uh, se main gun hits for a battleship. But here you can really see the turrets uh, moving around in their 360 degree um, configuration here. And here's the Des Moines. He's still going, but since I'm moving away uh, at a good angle, he doesn't have a good enough angle to get me to do anything about it. So... We do what we can to preserve the win. 305,000 silver credits we earn, 104,000 total damage on 59 main gun hits, detected three ships. We got an assisted to destroyed ships. A few fires from the secondaries, 120 secondary hits. Looks like a dreadnought medal, first blood medal, and uh, Close Quarters Expert Medal. That's a pretty good showing for the first match in Nav Navarre. And let's see how we did on a team result. Third place overall, uh, only 1,800 XP. But I think I kind of did show some of the qualities of the Navarre that you're going to be looking for if you get the ship. Uh, 129,000 uh, silver credits we cleared by the time it was all said and done. And there you go. That is it for my... Uh, sea Trials of the Navarin, kind of like the first look for me. And for 2,500 doubloons or $10, it's definitely a good Tier 8 battleship to acquire for your port, especially if you don't have a Tier 8 uh, battleship or even a Tier 8 ship. You can't go wrong with only $10 for the ship. And the secondaries are kind of fun to play around with. I'll probably look to get the... Um, accuracy commander going but uh, with that let me know what you think down below this is the jaguar and i'll see you on the high seas thanks for watching and subscribe if you like it